Hey folks, it's Avenger, welcome back to the channel, and today we're taking a look at a 50s classic. This is the Erco Air Coupe, or Air Coupe 415. Now this has been brought to us by BR Sim. They produced the, uh, the Bonanza variants that came out, and whilst they were interesting aircraft and had some really cool features, and I thought a lot of potential, and both have received quite a few updates, by the way, uh, they, they had some ge ge geometry issues, realistically, in terms of how they looked and they, some bits were not quite right, if that makes sense. Now, this is a attempt by designer Fred Week of the, uh, and it's, I believe it's called the Engineering and Research Corporation Airco, uh, right before World War II, to produce a simple to fly kind of get around. Now, this was envisaged to be a, a air commuter, really, a simple to fly aircraft that anyone could fly. And this was alongside things like the Navion as well. This one, of course, has no rudder pedals, just a brake. It's linked rudders to the ailerons, and there's limited movement of those, so you can't really... It's meant to be stall and spin-proof, which we know it's probably not. I'll manage, trust me. But the aircraft is... Um, there's already one thing that I can see that's off with this 3D model. And whilst the texture looks gorgeous, and we'll take a closer look in a moment, the canopy's a bit too big. Now, the canopy should be a bit smaller compared to the fuselage size on this aircraft. It needs to be a little bit tighter down. It seems a bit too big. That's my first observation. And it's a small one. It looks like an air coupe, for sure. But it looks, it just, it feels slightly too big. Now, this does come with six liveries. Now, the version that was released 1.0 kind of is super bugged because only one livery, this one, works. The rest of them, there's a file liaising issue. They will just show up as no textures found. Yeah, that's the release version of this aircraft. Let's take a look, shall we? So we'll head outside first, take a look around, and the bare metal livery is very pretty. You will see the detailing work on this is... It's not bad, actually. I kind of like it. It's very shiny. I'll give it that. Always look at the landing gear. Always. Mm, slightly on the simplistic side, but not bad. I know it's a drum brake design on this. Okay. Now, this canopy does seem a bit big. I feel like it should be slightly smaller based on the actual looking at the real aircraft. In fact, I'm looking at a picture right now of it on Wikipedia and it looks a bit too large. It should be scaled down slightly, which means the width is probably off because the cross-sectional shape looks right. It just looks a bit tall. Interesting. Uh, but modeling-wise, it's not bad. Those panel lines, my gosh, that looks like you could stick your finger in there. But it's, at least it's clean and visible. It's a decent model. I'll give it that. Now, let's go inside. Now, we have, of course, the tablet, which they've been including in a lot of their options. So we have things like gear fairings, which we'll put on. Uh, panel colour can be changed from blue to black on the fly, which is something I like about some of their features. They do actually allow you to change it to, wow, wow. Okay, blue, black, red, yellow. You could have your plane, really, in this. Static elements show. Windscreen cover. And cockpit vibrations that start only engine running. We'll put it on engine running. We'll give it that. So outside, we've got... This is what I like about the BR Sim stuff. They really do put the candy in there. Of course, somehow that doesn't go over the Venturi tube. Which is the, pre the predecessor to the Pito tube, if you're curious, folks. Surely that'd go over that. That doesn't make much sense. But there's our gear fairings on, and they do look very 50s. We've got our tie-downs and shocks. Nice little candy features. Now, this is €24 Euros on Sim Market. Now, I would expect 100% things to get beta tested before they get released, especially um, for that price, perhaps. But we'll see. Um, okay, what was that? Was that a... Oh, it's like a slightly... Oh no, that is the actual glass. It just is instant and there's no animation. It just goes down. Okay. I will say BR Sim's texture work has dramatically improved. This is really nicely done inside. I really like it. Now, compare this to their other ones. This is worlds apart better. Now, if he patches it and fixes the missing liveries and fixes some of the little bits and pieces like the animations, maybe the scaling, this could be a cracker. But this is a gorgeous little vintage plane. Now, you'll notice we have got a uh, transponder on here. 
which is useful. We have a Navcom radio, or at least a COM radio, just a COM one. And uh, we have a number of other little bits and pieces. Usually he includes some variety of options. So we have our cabin lighting there. We'll check that out in a second. We'll just save our options there. You know what, we'll go with... We'll, we'll stay with blue. I like the blue. It feels like it contrasts nicely. So of course we've got our usual yoke visibility that takes away the tablet. We have mixture, we have the mags, we have our starter, fuel pumps, fuel valve, fuel selector. Let's put that to both. Valve is open, pump is on. Cabin air, we have our plugs, we have our fuses which don't do anything. Hot air entry, throttle, mixture. Typical kind of start for an inbuilt starter. Pitch trim is here, which you literally are moving around by just pushing and pulling the lever. And you'll see down here, when I get rid of this, there's just a brake pedal. Yeah, that's a brake pedal. That's our parking brake. Yep, that's all we have. There is no rudder pedal in this aircraft. So let's get these uh, closed. We'll check out the noise in a minute, actually, see what it's like. But first, let's make it dark, shall we? Let's check out the night. People like to see the night lighting in these aircraft. I honestly don't do a ton of night flying in the sim, so I never really check it out. But obviously that's our typical sim kind of head torch we have. I don't remember how to turn that off because I don't do much night flying, of course, but there you go. So we have cockpit lighting, which is quite bright, and I believe there's no fading. So I think it's just one setting for that. Yeah, I don't see a way to actually dull that down just on and off. So you'd be able to look around and see things. There's no actual gauge backlighting that I can tell. It's rudimentary. We'll give it that. It is a VFR-only aircraft, so you wouldn't expect a ton. Prepare your eyeballs. Okay. Let's take this thing for a spin, shall we? So let's make sure my controls are set properly. Good to go there. I could take my feet off the, th the rudder pedals for once. This is going to feel weird. Okay, we have engine start. Give it a bit more throttle there. Appears to be no difference in sound. I do like the vibration though. That is kind of cool. Oh, we stole the engine. Not enough throttle. Okay, that's back up and running. So we'll close this again, which is very, very rapid. Let's turn my head on and we're gonna take her for a quick spin here. So our pedal is unlatched. Oh, this could be weird. How do I steer? And I just stole the engine again. How do I steer on the ground? Oh, the rudder actually does work. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so I actually can steer it with my... I'm confused now, because this shouldn't be steering, but it is. And it feels like it wants to go way too quickly. Let's turn the yokes back on so we can see what we're doing here. How do I make that go away? There we go. No, I don't want... I want this to go away. No, okay. There's normally a click spot on these to hide the tablet, but I don't really care for now. I'll just leave it turned off. Okay, so we have the engine running. Now, steering on the ground should be in these done with the aileron because it's connected to the rudder. Now, I think that might be a flight sim limitation here in that I can't do that and steer. But we'll go with it. Okay, we'll taxi her out here to the runway at Orcus. 3418... Not 1.8, sorry. Before 1.6, I think it is. And we'll get ready for departure. Nice, simple aeroplane. Really, really simple. Should be a simple process. Now, I'm meant to get to a certain speed here and then just apply full back pressure. So this will be interesting to see what it does. The instructions say full back pressure. 
okay. Mm, wasn't ridiculous. I, I think I eased off a little bit. I wasn't as, should we say, hard on the back pressure there, but I applied enough for it to, to lift off the runway, and it did. So the engine cowling vibration is perhaps a little exaggerated, but it looks okay. This thing really has some get up and go, oh my gosh. And for a GA Tora, it's not terrible. Now, I would have liked a... Maybe a, like a Garmin tablet option for GPS navigation. Because whilst there's a lot of vintage planes in this sim, one thing we discovered with things like the 247 is that there's no way to navigate once you leave America, really. There's a couple of those stations in the UK, not many in Europe, and then you're screwed everywhere else. So navigating in these vintage aircraft is hard. So the option to have a, like a touchpad type GPS system, like Garmin Pilot, would be phenomenal for sim pilots who want to fly these vintage aircraft, but you all the navigation tools you'd have are non-existent. Now this is a pretty solid GA VFR aircraft. You're not going to be doing anything too complicated with it, but it will certainly work. And if you navigate to buy uh, I follow roads and uh, other methods, you'll be just fine. So there is that. So handling wise, this is really nice. Now I notice that when I do turn, rudder is being applied automatically. Let's go outside and check that actually. Actually, is it? Am I imagining it's being applied automatically? No, it's definitely not being applied automatically. So the sim isn't able to do that link up, I don't think. Feet off the pedals here, not touch it. So the Arunka Champ, oh, not the Arunka Champ, sorry, the air coop here was meant to actually be able to steer with the oak on the ground, that would the nose wheel steering. I don't think it's actually staying. Let's get rid of this a second just to check it out. No, because it's not actually holding a... Oh, no. It's... it's actually doing it somewhat. It's staying coordinated in the turn without any foot input from me. Are you actually doing your thing? I can't tell if it is. Can you? Well, it seems to stay coordinated at least a bit. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Right, let's head back towards Orcas here. We'll see what it's like on landing. Although, it says it's stall and spin proof. Let's find out, shall we? That's going to stall my engine, so I don't want to do that. So I'll keep the throttle up here. Let's burn off some airspeed. We'll hold it till it wants to drop, and then we'll let it... It's mushing hard, it's mushing hard. It's just mushing and dropping the nose. I am full back controls. I'm even going to tilt a wing into the mix to see if I can encourage it to drop. It, it doesn't want to go, it just squishes the nose. Huh. Yeah, I'm full back on my controls here and it will not do it. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So at least part of what it's trying to say about the actual real aircraft is correct. It, it really doesn't want to spin from a stall. It, the stall, it will stall, obviously. Every aircraft will stall, but it's just mushing and staying straight because I don't think I've got enough control input there to actually force it off the edge. It must be possible under some conditions. I'm positive, but I can't seem to get it to do it right now. Oh yeah, fuel level, by the way. Dink. Dink. And... down there. Speaking of which, no sound change. Okay, so this is like the other BR sim ones, there's no external sound differences. Okay, so let's get the throttle down here. Our stall speed is about 42 knots, so we're going to bring her in to the field mindful of that fact. We are quite high up actually for an approach in this. I can probably stall it all the way down. Let's do that. Let's use this to mush some airspeed off. We don't have flaps really to slow us down, so. Or to kill lift, it's actually the correct use under certain circumstances. To a point, flaps will give you lift. 
After a point, they will definitely not. Okay. No, it's just mushing. Not quite still getting there. We'll S turn as we bring her in through the pattern. Yeah, we'll toss an S turn in on final and be just fine, I think, here. Now, I have noticed I actually can use the rudder. See? Rudder go burr. So it's not that it doesn't exist, it's just you can't see it in the sim. It's definitely still there on your hardware, though. So it will fly like any other aeroplane. Right, let's bring her around on runway heading. Airspeed is quite quick here, so... We'll just gently S-turn yes, it. Burn off some of this airspeed and altitude. By using up additional energy on our approach. Because that's all it is. When you're coming into an approach, all it is is energy. You've got excess energy if you are too high and trying to descend too quickly. So you burn that off by covering a greater distance by turning. I wouldn't recommend this on every approach, but it's certainly a way to get rid of it if you have it. Okay. We're looking pretty fast again. But I can't I can slip this, but it feels like it'd be a, a wrong thing to do, considering your real aircraft shouldn't be able to do it. Okay. Still pretty quick. We're doing about 70. So we're over our approach speed, so it's going to be a fast approach, but... I don't want to come in too slow, <laughs> given this is my first approach in this aircraft, and I know my stall speed's right in there, and I haven't got flaps. So I'm being a little over generous here. Approach is boringly easy. It will just come straight down here. And it wants to settle. And I just bounced once. Okay, this is because I am fast. It's flipping heck, like a bunny rabbit here bouncing down this runway. Let's hit that one big fat brake pedal. Yeah, this is the downsides of practicing various maneuvers at altitude, then realizing you need to bring it back into land. Because this is meant to be a review, not a test flight. Um, like I said, I can only show you this livery because the other ones are balked currently. Now, chances are they'll get patched very quickly, but why should that shouldn't really be a patch. That should be something that's good from the box, realistically. And for the price of it, yeah, that should be a thing. We've had some releases recently that will have raised the bar versus price and versus uh, type and what you should expect, like the 247. Now... This looks good. I will give it that. It does look really nice. Slight inconsistency on cop cockpit size. Or at least canopy. And obviously it hasn't got the actual link control behavior, which could have been coded in, I'm sure, third party, but not in the stock sim. I'm almost positive. It's not bad. But it's, it's not going to blow your mind either. I like it. I'm disappointed that I can't use the other liveries right now, just this bare metal one. And it feels like the threshold for the engine wanting to die is artificially high in this aircraft. Because to have the throttle high enough to that the engine won't stall, it's pulling me along at a relatively high speed here. Whereby which uh, I, I really need to ride the brake, which is not something you want to do in an aeroplane. I can't have the, pro the throttle engine idling well stopped and it actually behave itself see it's just gonna go plonk stop like any more and I'm moving which definitely feels wrong I don't want to ride the brake in an airplane that's not good for the brake system you will destroy it so what do I think of this thing I'd love to have reviewed more deliveries but unfortunately they, they yeah they don't work right now the features it comes with and the look of the whole thing is really nice the canopy looks a bit too big and the animation of those canopy opening segments is too fast. It's, it's open and enclosed as options. And there's no wind sound. Which I would have really expected when they're that big a thing. It's not bad overall. A bit expensive for what you get, I think, and the state it's in when it released it. But knowing the developers past, they will update it. If this is something that really appeals to you, go for it. If not, eh, maybe skip it.
Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.